or updated information from Pioneer, and that's been difficult to get. And um, the same issue with programming, looking forward to the next, um, you know, over the next five years, what, what does uh, the Pioneer uh, envision for a robust program in, um, for middle school, high school? And it would be good also to know what the theater schools would be um, looking for because they go into the middle school and high school. So that's been a challenge. Um, so to that end, um, I was asked to contact Jay Sullivan and see if um, he could uh, uh, have a conversation and maybe uh, talk to the chair, talk to the superintendent, and let them know that this is really important that uh, they yeah. provide information to Mark and Steve so that they can do as many deliverables as possible. Um, okay. Now, the reason I say as possible is because in recent communication, it looks like the a hard shut off. So with that in mind, you know, we have two months to get as much information as possible so that Steve and Mark can um, as many deliverables that um, in, in the, uh, the scope of the grant. Um, so we really do need their participation uh, ASAP. I have not heard back from uh, Jay Sullivan. That's who I uh, sent an email to. Um, I think that Steve was going to follow up with um, someone else with the department to, to see if, um, you know, where that was going to uh, move it along. So that really can have some uh, uh, a significant impact uh, if, if that cooperation isn't there on uh, what, what the, that's going to look like program-wise. Um, Steve can really um, get into the, um, what uh, Gil Montague envisions for the future and what they would like to bring back, what they would like to see uh, in programs that would uh, retain kids uh, in, in the district and um, can probably do as good a job as possible to represent what a comprehensive middle school high school program would be given in you know this day and age. So, um, but we'd be missing the perspective of the Pioneer District. And as you know, when we started out, we said it was incredibly important that we involve all the stakeholders, you know, parents, teachers, students, administration, and the pandemic has um, really made that difficult. Uh, we were looking, hoping to do face-to-face -face meetings and forums and so forth. So that wasn't, uh, we weren't able to do that. So when, um, yes. Uh, did, did it, I think an invitation, right, was extended uh, or, or an invite was um, sent out. No. We, we, a letter was sent asking to be put on the agenda of their next meeting. And um, did they not try to do that? Or, or did our consultants not, were they not able to go to that? Or because everything is on, on through Zoom now? Well, well, what had happened was, as you know, uh, in March, I think it was March 5th, that letter went to all the school committee members at Pioneer, and um, we were not on their April agenda. That's the bottom line. Um, so uh, my understanding was that the superintendent was going to, and this is by word of mouth, so I, I can't really um, substantiate it, but my understanding was the superintendent was planning on bringing up, uh, forming a uh, exploratory committee to look at maybe sharing services, superintendent services, business administrator services with uh, the Gil Montague uh, district. Um, but that was only told to me by an individual and I wasn't sure um, if that was just something that sounded good or whether that was really the intent. But the bottom line was, it, it, we were not on, as an agenda item. You should have received a rewrite of that letter to, um, for the May 14th meeting. I'm seeing Pat raising her hand. Did that answer your question, Deb? Or 
Yeah, yeah, I just wondered, and I know we have two committee members who are on the school committee, and i just very curious um, uh, what they might know of why it wasn't put on the agenda, and they might not know, but I, I mean, I will say on behalf of, uh, as a parent, and I know Raina is also a parent uh, of students at Pioneer, um, you know, we were on this committee for a reason, and so we certainly whether or not the school committee or the superintendent, um, the towns all want to explore this. So um, I, I guess what I'm yeah. saying is I think that if there's no response from the school committee, I think that there's uh, opportunity still for, for us uh, to talk about what a fulsome program looks like. I mean. Right, right. My understanding is, is that some of the members that are on the planning board and on the school committee have made attempts to try to get that on their agenda to talk about, and they have not been successful. I, um, I guess maybe Pat, you could you could uh, okay. validate or yeah, update um, me on that. I've I've spoken to John several times. Um, he promises that it will be on the agenda in May, which is in a couple of weeks. So I'm hoping that will happen. Um, I also suggested that maybe we meet with the four select men, four town select men, select boards, whatever, to see if they would be interested, if they're still interested in exploring this, because I'm hearing that maybe they aren't from the school department. Uh, I'm not quite sure what's going on, um, but I hope that we can get this on the agenda and move it along. Um, and I haven't heard about this exploratory thing you were speaking on, so I'm not sure about that. Right. And that's, that's um, all I know. Jane, would you want to comment on that? You're muted. Jane, you're muted. Greg, can you uh, let her know we can't hear her? Yeah, she's not muted, unfortunately. I don't know what her audio is not working. Oh. Her... Uh oh. Jane, are you the... try it again. Um, she probably will be able to shed some light on this. Um, uh, yeah, I would think. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, her for some reason her microphone is is not working. Can you send her a message and ask her to call call into you on your your phone so yeah. that? Uh, yeah. I can. Here, I'll I'll try to connect connect her with her through the chat here. Yeah. Because I, I think that's critical that, that she that she says that. I should say um, while we're waiting that uh, we did have a, a Greg and I participated yesterday with the Board of Selectmen in Warwick and gave them a review because it was the intent of the the um, uh, PR committee to be meeting with town select boards and finance committees and so forth and and we still want to do that so. Um, I had a conversation with uh, David Young and he said, oh, you can be on the meeting tomorrow. You can do it under unanticipated um, you know, business. So Greg and I uh, joined the select board meeting, gave him an update on what we've been doing and then uh, shared with them um, our difficulties <coughs> with the, um, with the uh, Pioneer District. Um, they had uh, indicated that uh, there were, um, other, uh, other communication uh, issues, issues and were one of the really good the attorneys involved, involved, involved and the pioneer attorney pioneer and the town attorney, attorney talking to each other and I asked them, I to, asked them to hold to off on that in, in uh, at least, uh, at least 48, 48 hours, hours. Oh, no, they told me they, they could wait me 48 hours, hours. So I wanted to see if Jay Sullivan would be able to um, uh, make some progress uh, I, I do want to say that all we asked for, and I don't understand why we weren't on the April agenda, it was pretty clear. All we wanted to do was give them an update on uh, what we've done to date, how we were organized, and um, be you know totally uh, transparent and see if they had any questions uh, as we move forward. That's all. And it wasn't going to take a lot of their time. Um, and so I was really disappointed that, that um, I know you know, there, there's a lot of extra pressure with the pandemic and they have to do things differently. But, um, you know, I just have to look at, at all the things that the Michael and Joanne are doing. Um, they, they have a lot of balls in the air as they're working their way through it. 
but they're still, um, it's important enough for them to provide information and have conversations. So I don't buy, um, I just don't buy that. So it's, it's just difficult for me. Uh, it's, a, it's a courtesy of a superintendent to um, provide uh, Alan? financial data. Oh, I see Jane, is, is she unmuted? I, well, she's unmuted on, on our end, but I'm not, still not sure if she. No, still no. can't hear her. I don't know what Jane was going to say, but Kath's oh. trying to say something. But she's muted. Oh, sure. Uh, hold on. I'd be interested in saying and hearing what Lance and Jane have to say. Now, Pat should not be muted. No, nope, I know. No, nope, I shouldn't be. Yeah. No, I hear Pat. You're okay. All right. I'd be interested in Lance and Jane. Uh, even though say. Jane's muted, I think I can report that Berniston is still oh, very interested in seeking okay. efficiencies amongst all the districts. So I, that has not changed in Berniston, and I feel like I have a pretty good eye and ear on it as well. Right. Yeah, I can't speak for the well. select board in Northfield, but I can't imagine why they wouldn't want, I don't see the select board at all changing their mind in Northfield. Mm -hmm. I would not Lynch? say that's an accurate report that the towns are thinking differently about it. Did that come out of Pioneer? Yeah. Okay. Enough said there. Speaking um, of the town, Lance? Jane, can, can you hear me? Thank you. <laughs> Okay, Jane, you can type in the chat in the in the sidebar. There's a chat if you wanna if you wanna type uh, some of what you wanna say. It, that could save time. You just allocate it to everyone. Can you see it or no? On the I right. really do hope that she can she can she has critical information that we yeah. had talked about earlier. So I do hope we can hear from her. I think well, Lance was ready to talk. For, the town of yeah. Mike and select board has not discussed any issues related to this committee. And as far as I know, we're still quite interested. Thank you. I don't know. Janet. How are we going to get uh, Jane? Um, can someone show their screen and hit share and then just kind of show her where to go? Yeah, I can. Question wow. is whether or not Jane, are you seeing? Actually, the the problem is it disappears when you go into share mode. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it's it's all. How about a, how about if you have her go back out and come back in? Well, I think she just did that, Jane. The other thing you can do is is you can phone in. Did you see the? Uh, I left the phone number and the the ID and password. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I, I'm not sure. Hold on. Let me see if I can. So can she click on chat at the bottom of her screen? And then the Zoom. See the chat? Do you see at the bottom of the screen, Jane, there's a chat? You can type in your, uh, you can type in a, what you want to say there. That, if that helps. If, excuse me, but if her screen's like mine, there's three dots and a blue box next to the mute button. True, yeah. If she's she presses on that, she'll get more selections. I just had chat here somewhere. Oh, I, I clicked on her blue box. Yeah, it's probably because you're working through the, uh, through the internet and not through the program. It says pin video on her screen. What does that do? Well, it's it's showing on my end that she's unmuted both uh, video and audio. So it makes me wonder if her if her microphone setting in her computer is not. Can you can you call what about her? I call her, um, and then she can talk through my cell phone. Yep. Yes, that's fine. Okay, hold on. Greg, her volume may be turned off. Well, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm thinking. So, Jane, I'm going to call you. Do you have your cell phone? 
I do. Okay, I'm gonna put. Oh, we hear you. We just heard oh, you. Yeah. All, my, all my butt punching finally worked. All right, okay. so ignore your cell phone. So now my. Go ahead. <laughs> you can hang up. I was gonna um, put you on speaker. So, um, <laughs> I've forgotten what I was gonna say. John is the one who told me that he was going to put on the agenda um, a discussion of sharing, and I don't remember his exact words now, uh, but my impression at the time was that he was going to set up another committee within the school committee to discuss sharing. That never got that out was of the stand -up. Yeah, that was an explore. The words you used for me when we were talking was, he had uh, was going to form a, an exploratory committee to um, look at sharing services in the two districts. Right. I wrote it down. <laughs> I'm glad you did. Um, I know that Bernard Stinn is definitely still interested. I, I do not understand why the school committee wants to override what their member towns want to do. It is absolutely beyond me that they think that they don't have to listen to us about anything. Um, I did share that in my correspondence with Jay Sullivan that as a member of the heart committee, there was a lot of work that we did and we got a similar response. So um, there seems to be a pattern. What, what information might we have um, at having attended school committee meetings, having attended every budget committee meeting? What kind of information might we have that um, that's needed to do this study that we don't have to All have? Right. Pat has something to say. Pat was on the. Pat, un un unmute, unmute your uh, screen. Okay. I think it's sad to say that the school committee doesn't want to cooperate because I think I'm speaking for Abby too. We haven't had a discussion that hasn't been brought up for our discussion at all. So it's not the school committee, it's, it's some other entity, but it's not the school committee. Abby, is that how you're feeling also? I, I would agree mostly. I think that there are some members of the school committee who Maybe. have strong feelings about this. Um, but, but like you just said, there has been no formal discussion and that's what I keep pushing our chair, that we, we need to talk about it. Even if we decide we're not interested as a committee, we need to talk about it because otherwise it's wasting this board's time. And I don't understand how we cannot study it if the four towns have directed us that they would like us to investigate it. I mean, that's how I feel. Maybe we have to not vote the budget unless they agree to do this study. Well, unfortunately, uh, we don't have we don't have enough time to um, to do that. We've got the June thirtieth deadline know. looming. We have Jay Sullivan. I hope that uh, Steve's gonna or someone's gonna shed some light as to whether or not we'll get participation. Um, but even if we don't, we have some strategies that uh, Mark and Steve will share on uh, what we will be able to do to get some uh, information. Uh, in, in this round of the grant. Um, I think that we will pursue this outside of this meeting. We've already had one meeting with um, Woolwick, and believe me, they are way on board and very disappointed of the pattern of lack of uh, cooperation. Um, I got an email. They, sent the me, they sent me um, the contact people for the other three towns to uh, share, give them an update and uh, share information. So. Uh, Abby will be um, following that up because you're on the PR committee as well. So, um, you know, we'll follow it up outside of this meeting again. We'll, we'll make a phone call tomorrow and we'll see um, what information I can get to be on their agenda. So in the meantime, so that we can move this along. Can I um, add something? Oh, one more. Jane, go ahead. Um, in the, when we talked about going to Pioneer School Committee meeting, we said, get on the agenda, don't do it through uh, public comments, 
but since we're not getting on the agenda, if that agenda comes out for um, May and it's not on there, then I think we should do it uh, under um, public comments and more than one of us ought to do it. Maybe one from each town. Just a All right, we can share that with the um, with the uh, the town officials because it would be good under public comment if we had each town official there, um, perhaps bringing that to the attention of the committee on how disappointed they are. And to your point, um, I get that if this you, you have to have it on the agenda to have a formal discussion at the school committee level, if the chair and the uh, superintendent and or whoever else may be involved in formulating the agenda are not putting it on um that's extremely unfortunate i don't understand why a school committee member can't when they're doing subcommittee reports just report out under standing committee here's where we are and so there were updates provided all along um apparently this seems to be i'm going to speculate very threatening to some folks about the prospect of looking at um uh, a regional uh, a six town regional district. And, you know, we're supposed to be looking at this for the best interests of the district and of the kids, not of individual people. And so well, that message really does have to, to get out there because I believe the people on the planning board and on the town get it that Pioneer in particular is not going to be able to sustain a school district that's going to keep people when um, they have declining enrollment. Mark's preliminary um, projections are that there's going to be limited um, money available through the uh, Student Opportunity um, Act. Um, Gil Montague will fare much better, but will need a hold harmless or some kind of incentive because they could lose their money because uh, they, they could get in excess of a half a million each year compounded. So, you know, that, that's another conversation with the state about providing some incentive so that uh, we could have a six town regional and and people you know will all be able to um, benefit so um, the towns have got to get the word out um, i I know David Young is using the newsletter to share uh, the update with uh, the people in the town because I don't think they know really what's going on and what lack of uh, cooperation we're having at the district level um, and and I feel badly in that it, it, you're right, it's not, it, it can appear that the school committee is not cooperating, but they can only cooperate when, when they have a conversation and we find out how they feel about it. So well, I, um, I remember that Pat, when Pat was chairman of that committee, I remember one meeting where she emphatically told the whole world that there would be nothing on that agenda unless she put it there. So I'm assuming that Kristen's inherited that um, edict. And I don't uh, think I ever said that. that well, we, we can go back and look at the videos, Pat. I'd love to have you do that. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> we can find it. Okay, moving along. So moving along, um, why, don't we, why don't we move now to um, <clears throat> get an update from whoever wants to go first, uh, Mark and Steve and have them explain um, what they might be able to do without Pioneer's participation, what they could do with it. So I'm gonna let them sort of decide how they want to go forward. So I'm gonna start with Mark. Thank you and nice to be with you this evening. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. Good. So let me begin by summarizing our deliverables where we are with those deliverables. And from my perspective, um, the challenges in getting the data for my piece of the deliverables. I'll turn it over to Steve, who will fill you in on his piece. Big picture. We did the first study, and it showed that there were questions of unsustainability and that this grant provides a deeper dive into the study. We said we would respond to your RFP, which first called for a baseline. Just what are the financials? What are the staffing? What are the uh, enrollment as of 
fiscal 2021, and then look at a five-year picture, 21 through 26. And after the baseline, come up with the do-nothing scenario. Where would the two regions be if they do nothing to their expenditures, programming, if they do nothing to their revenues? What would the normal cost of inflation, what would the normal cause, cause of uh, the state's Chapter 71 reimbursement, Chapter 70 program, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm probably 90% through both those deliverables. Having done the baseline, which was rather quick, we had the data off of DESE's website. We had the approved Gil Montague budget for 21. We had the approved Pioneer budget for 21. And I got the actuals for 19 and the budget for 20 for Gil Montague. I got the budget for 20 for um, Pioneer, but I don't have the actuals for 19 for Pioneer. So as, I'm, as I walk you through this phase, uh, uh, I'm showing you the type of data that we're missing as I go through this. The, the high level summary of what we've done so far is we've got the baseline and the do nothing scenario complete for Gil Montague. And Mike and Joanne are reviewing those numbers and they will get back to me when they can. We don't have the projections for Pioneer. We do have the analysis with DESE on what chapter 70 will be going through fiscal year 26. And with that, what the, what the Student Opportunities Act will provide going through fiscal 26. We have already analyzed that. And as Alan has mentioned, A, Gil Montague is gonna benefit significantly from the Student Opportunities Act. I'm gonna say on average $400,000 increases each year through fiscal year 26. Pioneer Valley is the opposite. Pioneer Valley is gonna receive minimum aid for the next five to six years. That's $20,000 of extra chapter 70 aid per year for the next five years as opposed to Gil Montague having on average a bump of $400,000 a year for the next five years. Do the math. That's 2 million for Gil Montague. That's 100,000 for Pioneer Valley. So the issues of unsustainability or putting it the other way, can the two districts sustain themselves becomes more challenging as you look at these do nothing scenario. <laughs> when I tried to reach out to Tanya, she was reluctant to work with me because she hadn't had clearance from the superintendent to work with us. And back then, she was only 10 hours a week. I don't know the status of her today, but even if she did have the approval to work with us, what could she do with 10 hours a week, given her responsibilities at Pioneer? So we came up with some alternative strategies. One, simply take Pioneer from the do nothing scenario we did 18 months ago, 24 months ago, and just linear that out. Two, work with the overseer at Pioneer Valley to work with us with these projections. So what kind of projections are we talking about? We already have the enrollment projections from NESDIC. We're talking rural aid, we're talking other sources of revenue. We're talking looking at transportation to see the transportation expenses to then <clears throat> project chapter 71 
while we're waiting for the Gil Montague study to be completed on the transportation analysis for the two regions. So that gives you a sense of where we are on the financial side and the type of challenges we're having in obtaining what I believe is not that much of an effort for someone to work with me on these financial projections. As a consultant, I like to have my numbers validated to a reasonable degree. So that brings you up to speed on the financial side. On the programming side, along with the financials, Steve and Mars, and I, I'll let him go into more detail, but just as a summary, were to work with Gil Montague High School, administrators, principal, Pioneer Valley High School, administrators, principal, together, which is now remotely, to look at programming of a combined high school, similarly middle school, and what additional offerings and what efficiencies could be gained by regionalizing having one high school, one middle school. Last time we modeled this. This time we want to take your data and put it together. And the same for the elementary. After that, we would have a regional budget. One high school, one middle school, et cetera. And the elementaries would remain as elementaries. And then I would come back and look at the cost of that and look at the assessments, statutory alternative, to see what it costs each town under this new combined six town region. With that, I'll turn it over to Steve. Mark, before you do that, um, can I ask that, so you would do a comparison between what their assessment would be for the do nothing and their assessment would be with the six town regional? We right. could do that. Um, it was more the six town region. And how the high school, how the middle school, how the elementaries would form one region, one regional budget with corresponding alternative assessments for that. Now, the assessments are going to be hinged on. Um, what would be required in the minimum contribution. And so if Gil Montague is, if they haven't had the conversation about how, what they might be able to do to give them an incentive, wouldn't that get passed on to a higher assessment? So let me, let me comment on that. Um, we have worked with Desi, not just on the Student Opportunities Act going through fiscal 26, but what would the combined region of six towns, what would the uh, local district contributions be from each of the six towns to the new combined region? We have that data. And with that, we have the projection for chapter seven. Here's the problem. We identified this in our first study. And I believe, and I stand to be corrected on it, that Gil Montague would receive additional Chapter 70 aid, but because Pioneer's base aid is so significantly higher than its foundation aid, I believe around 1.5 million, that the added Chapter 70 money from Gil Montague would be absorbed by that excess in Pioneer mm. that combined. The six town region, this was 18 months ago, would lose $200,000. And we asked okay. at that time, would there be a hold harmless to prevent the six town region not to lose that, that $200,000? That number now exceeds over $500,000. So the same issue, higher amount. All right, thank you. Steve? Uh, we're going over to um, Steve, is that correct? 
Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Um, our part of it for Mars was to look at a combined high school and a combined middle school. Uh, last year, we went through and did some work on that. And just to give you the numbers, last year's numbers, and we're working up, I got to go into GESC and get some updated numbers. I think they'll be that far different. But for Gil Montague in grades six, seven, and eight, they had 253, Pioneer 195 for a total if you combine it 448, which is a good number if you want to run a middle school with a lot of options. High school, um, uh, Turnus Falls was 202 and Pioneer 177. And that give you a total of like 379, close to, uh, getting close to 400, which again would be good. Remember 202 and 177 high school, awfully small to work with. So we're working today, we were, look, we're looking to find some comparative towns, uh, whether the regions or high schools or middle schools. Uh, we were into do, do some work in DART today and looking at that and coming up that we can compare and see what kind of programs they are, those very successful schools. And then I talked to Mike, uh, to Superintendent Sullivan this morning, and what we're going to do is get together on Tuesday and start discussing what kind of programs do they want to have? What do you have now? And what would you like to see so that you'd have a robust uh, school district? Uh, people want to stay. Uh, Mike, if I'm correct, you've got like 249 school choice out. And I know a Pioneer has a good number going out. So again, would you maintain in the future that those numbers would stay? When you have such a small high school, it gives you limited what you can offer uh, reasonably uh, and how many uh, advanced placement classes you want to go with, how many foreign languages and so forth. So that's where if you got up to like 400, that's a pretty good number to work with. So what we're doing now is looking at both of those. Um, if I have it correctly, right now at, uh, at uh, Pioneer, there's seven through 12 and there's been discussions looking at bringing eventually the sixth grade up. Uh, that would release some room, room for them down at the elementaries at Berniston and Northfield and Warwick. And then, um, so that would be a six, seven, eight, and then a nine, 12 high school. It'd be one, one up at the, one, maybe like at the middle school up at Pioneer and high school uh, seven, eight, nine down at uh, Turnus Falls in Gil Montague. So that's what we're looking for and putting, trying to change what's the program. And if we have time, the next step would be is putting together what would that cost. Now, I we did calculate approximately that when you combine there could be some reductions in staff um, but I think better on it that instead of that reduction you could then take it to improve your programs that you didn't have that you'd want to be able to have so we got to look at all of that and I've had some discussions um, is that are you looking at savings you're looking for a better program and I think some of the words we're hearing you want to you want a good program um, if you can stay within what we're doing that'd be great the other thing I do want to add is because I've been following and talking with the department on a number of things, and I don't have an answer. I'm Jay Sullivan's talking to Pioneer. I will be talking again tomorrow uh, to them. I mean, they've been really straight out with stuff, but I'll, they, they have the letter that you sent, and uh, they're going to check and see what Jay can do. Um, the other thing is we've taken the Student Opportunity uh, account, uh, Act, Act and the different additional money. Um, very some real concerns and how much money is going to be available from the state. Uh, how much money they're losing just on sales tax alone. Uh, they're losing on other income coming and will that be available? Will they be able to put it through? They say yes, but what, the first indication we're going to see is when the house comes out with their budget, which usually have been out by now, <clears throat> but we're hearing later it's going to be into late May or June. So, uh, and again, even will the state have their budget, um, and when they lined up with a 112 budget. Um, just today, this afternoon, the Department of Education, DSE, sent out to regional schools is how to handle uh, doing your doing budget and then your assessment based on the town meetings not going to take place. And then Monday at uh, 11, 12 noon, there'll be a Zoom meeting of superintendents and business managers getting on um, and talking about questions that they have on how to proceed. And things you have to take into account. Did they vote a budget before the close down? Um, if they haven't, how uh, that's going to all the options that they have. Uh, the state's required to make sure schools open when they say they can open. And so hopefully they can open in September. So everybody knows they've been closed till June 30th. So we're still up in the air on things. We'll proceed in looking at what would a high school and appreciate uh, Superintendent Sullivan and working with his uh, 
uh, high school principal, middle school, is it, it, it principal and high, vice principal and how we want to proceed with that. So that's where we are at the moment. And I think we can get through that and we'll see how far we can get on actually putting together a, um, a, a, a actual uh, six town uh, budget. And then you calculate. So, very, very concerned. So I'm, hearing you say, oh, I'm hearing you say that you're going to basically provide that deliverable um, regardless of Pioneer's participation. Obviously, it will be um, greater in scope or perhaps a little, I don't, want, I don't want to say more accurate, but it certainly would have their involvement if you could, if you can get their, you can get their participation. If not, you're still, you're going to have that deliverable with the disclaimer that you, you, um, you know, relied heavily on the administration and the staff at uh, Gil Montague, correct? Yes, and definitely would like, would like to work with them. And as Mark said, one of the things that we do as consultants, when we put things together, reports or calculations, then we want the district uh, to take a look at it and uh, verify that, you know, we're corrected, we missed something. Um, having been a former business manager, I know all of the I knew all the things about my when I was business manager, how everything worked. If something got left out, I would know that. So that's why you want to take a look, and that's why we want to involve the uh, principals. Looking over the years, um, what what you've had to cut, and what did you cut, and what would you like to put in, and what do you think? And even they could send out a survey to staff. Uh, what do you think would be helpful to keep kids? Uh, would be uh, exciting to kids uh, to have, um, and also. Okay. I think can you share and do other things? So that's what we wanted to work on. Right. I um, have, Michael. I have Jay, uh, Alan for a second. Uh, Jay Barry yeah. is on and also is uh, uh, Mac Reed. Jay, do you have any comments? Oh, I think you've said it pretty well. We, if we can't get um, the participation of the pioneer administrators, it means we've got to work with Michael and his staff and, and use models that exist elsewhere. So no, I, beyond that, no. Okay. Um, and I'm glad you're looking at other districts of a similar size, uh, you know, to see, you know, what they're able to do in their high school. So that, that can fill in some of the blanks. I just feel badly that, um, you know, we wanted so much to have the teachers and parents and so forth part of this in the ministry as part of this process. Mike, when he was uh, talking about um, one high school uh, and, and he just said one at the, the high school at Gil Montague in, in, um, in the middle school, when you're looking at the transportation, are you um, are you looking at what that transportation looks like with the high school at Pioneer, and then the high school at Gil Montague, and then the high school at I mean the middle school at Pioneer and the middle school at um, Gil Montague? Do, do you have the flexibility to manipulate to see what what those um, routes would look like and what that cost would be? Yes, I think. Are we running it? I think they're. We have, we have the transportation consultant doing it in both directions for both schools. So middle school in Montague or the middle school in um, okay. Northfield or vice versa with the high school, both of those sets. Can I just, can I just ask, um, I just don't want to make an assumption. Why would we always consider Pioneer being the middle school? I just don't know how big Turner's is, and maybe that will help me, or maybe Turner's is newer. I just don't know. But, you know, I also work at Greenfield High School, so I can talk to you about Greenfield High School pretty clearly, about what services we have, and also can speak pretty clearly about what Pioneer has and what Pioneer does not have, as can Raina. And um, so please do not forget that we are both heavily engaged in Pioneer. You don't want to just ignore the stuff that we know um yeah so but, but so that's the first question was about about the buildings steve can you make sure that you touch bases with with deborah part of part of what we were hoping was is that when the when the um when you put together your program what that might look like your first draft that that goes out to the education subcommittee they can take a look at it and then they can give you feedback from what they know from parents and staff and so forth and and what that would look like. So we can probably fill in the gap pretty well because I think they have a handle on you know what they've heard from teachers and parents and kids and so forth. So that would be a good uh, set of eyes to do. Perhaps it could be a subcommittee meeting. Uh, later on, we're gonna vote so that that could happen. And the subcommittee could meet with you when you have the program, um, uh, your first run uh, pass through the program and get their input uh, before you do the final report. Does that 
Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, that's fine. And it, I, making one assumption, it, it could go either direction. You take a look at once you pro come up with a program, which would be better suited, but also take a look at what would be, where would the kids have better opportunities, say, if you wanted to do uh, internships or collaborative work or whatever. So where would they be able to do that easier uh, for kids? So there's other things here. It's not, in, it's not totally decide that's the way it's going to go. It's just one one option, and then you can you could have the high school up at Pioneer and the middle school down at Del Montague. I mean, that's a decision yeah. that the communities will have to make. Right. I guess I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't a a, a decision already made that Turner's no. is a better. I just, I, and I don't know, and maybe it is. I just don't know. Well, that would be would again would be a good point. It would be take a look at come a program, then look at the physical plants and see who could provide the best for the plants that you'd like to see. I mean, one of the yeah. things that. One of the things that you don't see a lot now is some of you are dealing with your chapter 74 programs that you might want to try to run that you're not in competition with Franklin County, but some things you want to run well, who would have the facilities to be able to run some of those things the kids might like and would be, want to be involved with. Yes. I will Michael. say just to speak on half of Pioneer, the, the land around Pioneer is incredible and it doesn't get used as much as it could if we had more opportunity all that land it's owned by you know uh, the high school or the town so I'm just letting you know that's what once we come up with, yeah i agree with you once we come up with some sort of some a, a plan or a possible in programs you want to go you tend to take a look and see what's going to be the best and that's a decision of the community's going to have to make not us alan this yes. is simple this is just a simple answer to deb i i don't know what facilities are up at pioneer to be honest with you but I think in, in uh, speaking for having taught at the, uh, Turner's Falls High School, when you have TV studios, when we did the renovation, all the science labs are all brand new. You know, the greenhouses, the fitness center, the dance room. So I don't know what Pioneer says, and, and Steve's right, but there are some, due to the renovation, there are some newer facilities, the theater, that are just magnificent. Um, like I said, I don't know what's up at Pioneer. Um, but uh, right, and that's that stuff I don't know, and um, I had heard about some of it, but I just haven't seen it. So I guess I just don't want to just toss it out. Yeah, no, it's good. Good well, to I, know. I appreciate. I assume that was true. I just wrote a note to myself. We're going to get a list of facilities as best we can. So that, that's a very good point that we list it, and but not make a decision where we think it should go. But I think as Mike said, going to look at what's the transportation either way going to look like. Mike, are you all set? You ha you wanted to make a comment. Well, you you kind of covered it. I was just going to say that when you when you look at what a robust middle school would, what programs you'd have and what they would cost and how much they need to be staffed, then you do the same for high school. That can be done kind of generically, and then you can start looking at the the facilities issues and also, frankly, you know that those are real cultural and political questions too, and and clearly you want to save that till farther down the road till you have some of the other information uh, more clear. I, I agree with that so, uh, Mike. There's Mike, this cultural and every other the things are going to be considered and how people feel and, and take a look at what's going to be the best options and, and present those. I agree with Michael's comments. So originally I had on the agenda, or not originally, on the agenda, I was going to follow up with a, having a vote of the planning board on modifications to the deliverables that the consultants would do. Um, I'm not sure at this point, you know, I want to see what the pleasure of the committee is, but I'm not sure at this point that we really need to take a vote, but rather uh, if everyone understands um, sort of the challenges that they have and we've heard on uh, how they're thinking that, uh, you know, they would proceed, then perhaps that um, I'll just, I, I could handle that, that uh, unless people have an objection that they understand what the consultants, how the consultants are going to approach this. Um, but I, I, I want to hear how Mark and, you know, what Mark and Steve feel about that. Well, um, would you, would you like a specific vote of the planning board on, on um, what you're doing? Because it's a little bit different than what uh, we had originally uh, um, thought we were doing or how, what do you think? Mark? So I'll go first. Um, I'm at I'm at I'm at a standstill. I don't want to waste effort going forward, time going forward, money going forward. I as a 
mentioned earlier, I could go in one or three or four directions. Uh, the results would be reasonable. Some might be more reasonable than others. Um, and I would like to have as much input from both districts as possible. I'd also like to have validation. I can wait a little bit. I think the real time squeezes on Steve and Mars coming up with the educational programming side. As I said, my piece, my earlier piece is, I'm gonna guess 90% done. I don't think it'll take too much to get input, particularly if it's Tanya, to give me the financial information I need and more importantly, that the projections are reasonable going forward. Uh, so I will, I can wait and it might be preferable from on my side to wait to see if the May 14th uh, meeting has any results and then I can wrap up the financial do nothing scenario. I think it's really the effort on Steve's part that is critical in terms of the timeline here. Steve, you want to comment? Well, I, I agree. It's, um, we'll go as far as we can. You know, um, obviously, you want to take a look at the financials, and we'll work as much as we can and come up with some data uh, and showing what some comparison schools, successful schools are, and programs, and working with the administrators. And appreciate Mike's uh, help and everything on that. We'll go as far as we can. But I would say, is there anything, that, Mark? Oh. I, I would say this that we are working for you, we are working for the planning board, and at some point in time, I would need your approval of whichever alternative strategy to complete the do nothing on my end. So I'm giving you that which you asked for. Can I just, can I just ask Mark, you um, are talking about getting more information from Tanya, but waiting for that meeting, if the meet, the school committee meeting is the 14th of May, um, right now, the plan would be just to share what it is we're doing with the school committee and not necessarily getting information from them, um, unless I'm misunderstanding what, certainly that was what we were planning to do in April. So I guess I just wonder what, how will you get any information from Tanya, if the school board or Mr. Schedule just stonewalls or doesn't allow Tanya to share it with you, and it doesn't seem like she's there, he's going to allow that to happen between now and the school committee meeting, and it will it won't happen at the school committee meeting either. I would imagine if you're just there doing a presentation and they're just listening. I guess I just wonder what what the strategy is to get the information you need. I think the best thing that could happen at the school committee meeting is, is that uh, John is apparently, um, how do I say this? Um, let me, let me wants to make let sure he has now. the blessing. He wants to have the blessing of the school committee to be able to um, proceed and release the information. For whatever reason, he's decided uh, he wants to have the, the school committee tell him it's okay. Not sure why, because he could just go forward and then report to the committee what he's doing. But for whatever reason, he's deciding that uh, he will not do anything unless the school committee authorizes him to do that. So not you're sure saying John schedule, Alan. You're saying John schedule is saying that. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Yeah. I'm that he's waiting I'm for the saying, school committee to give him the blessing to go ahead and um, sh share information that they have. You think so? Well, I think he uses I think he uses it as an excuse when he when he's uh, in a place that he doesn't want to do something. He won't necessarily wait for permission if it's something he wants to do. I agree. I don't think that's what he's doing. I don't think he's waiting for the blessing. He is in charge. He has a lot of power. I mean, this is um, from my perspective as an observer. He has a lot of power in that school committee and he pretty much gets to do what he wants to do. So I don't, I don't, I think I'm not speaking out of turn. My observation is that the school committee might be 
split or there might be a majority of people saying, yes, we need to go ahead and, and look at this visualization and we need to give the information to these consultants. But John is the obstructionist standing in the way of allowing that to happen. So, and that's really unfortunate because I, that's um, my opinion. this is, this was born, right. No, I would and, agree, and I would with, agree that with that opinion. That. He, he, um, this was the, the four towns at a town meeting authorized for the appointment of a planning board, creation and appointment of a planning board, because clearly the town gets that um, there's difficulty going forward, both programmatically as well as financially. Um, John it will be up to the could, chair of the planning board, to the, the school committee, to guide the conversation to this is what we're going to do, and we will vote on this, allowing Tanya to speak, you know, to the consultants. Right. I mean, that's, it really has to be uh, Kristen to, to push this forward, not John. Right. John is but we, the superintendent. He's not right. trying we to- We don't work. Right, we're, 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 we're oh, half yeah. of, the, of, the, of the four towns, and the school committee is, they're not in charge. We don't report to the school committee. We're basically saying the towns want this. We're asking for information. You're not providing it. You're not cooperating. This is something the towns felt was important. Shame on you. Um, you're holding this process up. You need to cooperate. If they choose not to, it doesn't mean the ball stops that we're done. We're going to go forward and do the best that we can. And it will be really obvious that we got no cooperation from the superintendent or limited and their business administrator or director and the school committee could have weighed in. And if they felt that they, you know, that, that they represent the towns, school committee members represent the towns for being on the school committee and the towns are the ones that said, we want this done. So um, it, it just makes no sense. Steve, my understanding is, is that, that um, John shared with you that, um, correct me if I'm wrong, that he wasn't going to do anything unless the school committee gave him permission or something to that effect. And that's that correct, accurate? Alan. He had said to me he wanted the school committee, whether they call busing or permission to proceed with that. It was originally supposed to be on the March 12th meeting, um, and that meeting got uh, postponed. And then it didn't show up on the April meeting, and he I was told to be on the May 14th. I did speak to the chair and asked that it could be on there so that we could proceed with that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, Greg, we've got three people in the in the hopper here. A couple, here for couple of questions. questions. So I was I was first, then Jane, then Abby. Um, why why don't we just go with the public records uh, or a FOIA request uh, and hit on all fronts? Uh, Mark, is there? I mean, what what do you need that we could request to at least have that formally proposed? Uh, first of all, given the 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 virus going through a public request might take longer than the process to complete this. That, my, my thought is that's fine, but at least we have it in documentation that we're actually formally requesting it. If they're going to stonewall and, you know, we, we can at least say we've, we've done everything we can, including that. Uh, whether or not we get it right away at this point doesn't really matter. I, I want to just make sure we're hitting on all fronts. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I would agree. One of the problems so we would need... with, a, with, I'm sorry, one of the problems with a public records request is you can't use it to ask questions and get answers. You have to ask for existing documents. And, uh, but I think politically that this uh, request, you know, sh so it's like playing Jeopardy almost folks in terms of, of the request. Um, I made one with respect to over a year's worth of executive sessions pioneers had with respect to contracting and was given a letter uh, in response that said that um, they weren't ready for release and the I appealed to the Secretary of State and they uh, turned me down because you got an answer. They aren't ready for release. So I said, oh yeah, this is an open meeting law request. Uh, violation. So I made an open meeting law complaint and then the COVID virus hit and I was asked for some forbearance, which I gave and nothing's happened since. So you're right about the, the time period, but I think we should do it. And 
Um, this was discussed at length uh, with Greg and um, Alan on a call with the select Borwick Selectman's meeting Tuesday night, and there was a reporter here in the meeting the whole time. So, um, <laughs> you didn't tell me that. <laughs> I well, I mean, Always you hard. you really were a good balance on my craziness, and uh, and I said, oh man, I but you know, in fact, I tried to bring up like uh, making a, a licensure complaint. The point being that the validity of it isn't as important as the fact it was raised. I mean. Our educational consultant with Warwick Elementary was appalled to learn that uh, some things about Kingsley that were underscored and and John in the way, you know, that this committee is seeing the same sort of treatment that Warwick's Horace Mann too saw from Pioneer. And we, we do have to re, re, we, uh, re emphasize that this this meeting is being recorded. So just just to let you all know. <laughs> yeah. Well, there, so there's, we there's had there's was Jane stage. next, like, and then Eddie. Well, I I was going to recommend the you know requesting the records, uh, public records request. Um, the other thing to recommend is that we all call John Skajo. If his phone's ringing off the wall with with um, twelve people from his district who are appointed by their towns to this committee, all requesting the same thing. Um, it's going to at least get annoyed at the phone calls. Maybe he'll react to them in a different way. I think I know what some of his problems are. He told me that Gil Montague is not interested in, in uh, consolidating with anybody. Where he got that information, I don't know. Maybe all you people from Gil Montague can tell me. But that's what he told me last week, two weeks ago. Okay, Abby? So two things. One, the uh, May 14th Pioneer School Committee meeting has been moved to the 21st. So oh. in terms of our timeline, that um, I don't know if that changes things. The other thing is that I don't have my, my notes for our, from the meeting um, with me. Um, but I remember, and Pat, you can, or David, you can pack, back me up on this, that a few months ago, at some point in the recent history, or even Renee, um, the school committee did vote for John to be able to explore shared services with other districts. And Absolutely. that wasn't limited to Gil Montague or any specific district. Yes, you're right. So he has what our happened? permission. I missed that. The school, the school committee vote. Oh, they had already said that he should be exploring this. Correct? Yes. Is that what you said? Oh. Well, so it was shared services with a with any local district. It wasn't specific to Gil Montague. Was that last? No. How many months ago was that? A couple. A I couple. believe it was, it was at. I believe it was at the same meeting where the school committee voted to close Warwick. And it and might. It might have been. It was supported an me meeting. in that. I, I, I think I moved it, and Sharon, who had voted to close Warwick, supported this this idea. Yeah, I, I, I can't that, remember. It was in person. person. I know that. Yeah. Who was next? I, I, everybody lit up. Mark? <laughs> um, I just want to mention that if our scope changes, we must go through DESE with a scope amendment. And that's that's a constraint to get to the June 30 deadline. I understand the amendment process has been streamlined. The amendment process usually took 30 days on average, but <laughs> but that 30-day period no longer exists. And that DESE would amend the scope on these grants rather quickly. But if we have to go that route, so it's a balance between waiting till, I guess, May 21 now, which then leaves us five weeks to get to yeah. June 30. I don't know. I'm, 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 I mean, this is, this is a conversation we shouldn't even be having. So, so that's, that's just frustrating in and of itself. But, um, I'm wondering if we should figure out how to make a motion that creates two pathways 
And then depending on um, what we get for information, we you follow um, one or the other pathway. What do you think, Mark? Well, we've already, you've already reached out to Jay Sullivan. One pathway could be as simple as Jay talks to John. John agrees to to work with Steve, but Tanya to work with me. And we get the information we need. And we go forward with relatively little impact on, on the staff at both Gil Montague and at Pioneer. We will need let's to, call that plan one. We'll call that plan one that I can have the, the committee vote on. Now go to the next one. The next one is we don't receive anything. Um, May 21 comes. We get the blessing from the school committee. And now we got five weeks. And what can we do? with quality in five weeks. At that point, we will have, I think, fairly well analyzed Gil Montague, or let me rephrase it. We will have analyzed the one region, high school, one middle school region, but with one angle from Gil Montague. That would be number two. Yeah, let's call that plan two. Number three would be we get to May 21 and the school committee says, nope, no can do. And then I guess we might go back to modeling. At that point, I might do linear projections from a prior study. And may I remind you that in our prior study, we looked at shared services, Gil Montague, Franklin County, Gil Montague, Pioneer, Franklin County, Pioneer. And I understand from what Abby said that the school committee has asked John to look at shared services beyond Gil Montague, which may include other districts other than Franklin County. Wait a minute, that's not within the scope of this grant. Correct, we're, we're not doing shared services as part right. of this scope. Right, right. So can we, could we then as a planning board um, authorize you to implement plan one, two, or three on May 21st uh, or 22nd, depending on uh, which scenario ended up being um, reality? Well, I'm thinking aloud here. I'd like to get some input from others. Okay. So uh, Michael, Michael had his hand David up. David and then Michael. Michael's okay. had his hands up. Michael's had his hand up for a while. So, um, you know, I talked to our state senator and at least Montague state rep yesterday, and they're they they're not hopeful that we'll get an extension of the of the funding for the consultants past uh, the end of June. So, in terms of using the services of Steve and, and Mark uh, and Jay, we're gonna we need to try and get as much done as we can by then. I mean, the, the planning board can go on indefinitely but the consultant supporting that work will only go until that time. And you can't waste half of the, the time between now and then waiting for, for the um, Pioneer School Committee to give you their blessing. So, and I don't think we need to really change the scope of the work. I think we'll, I think the educational study in particular along and you know, there's a lot of people around that know what a good middle school would look like and what a good high school would offer without necessarily talking to the administration of one district. So I think that can proceed, it'll, but it'll be an opportunity lost by having that voice. Like they may say, we love instrumental music and that may not get the emphasis they want to, or, or, you know, counseling or whatever, but that's- You can talk to us. 
Yes. You could talk to two parents. Right. Exactly. So, right. So I think I don't Steve think noted that be any motions or anything made. I think uh, you know you just need to decide in what way you want to go have your voices heard uh, and and have the work continue as best we can. David. Uh, so Mark, my question is: Do you, do you have a um, punch list of of information that we're seeking and and how much of that might Jane and other finance committee members already have or at least be able to supply something or the select board staff so I'm a town coordinator in, in Warwick and up to my ear and, and I'm a school committee member I mean if we circulate that this if we say the school committee won't give us this information uh, select boards, finance committee, school committee members, what do you have on the subject? Um, it's kind of how we went with Warwick's redesign. And in the process, we learned a lot digging around. So, David, the- I wonder what you have on that committee, David. What the Warwick uh, committee has. Yeah, I wonder how much of that information we we are we do have and could share with you, um, and and it might motivate that, the school to correct it. One of the well, things I added is information information that we're looking for is, is actually meeting it. We could do it Zoom, but um, what do they administrators who have been running the schools? What would they like to see and they know that could be better to run and what would be practical to do? We, it's not necessarily that you just said, David, it's we, trying to get that information. They don't have them created. We need to have discussions with them. What do they look at in the input? And I think Michael said, we're gonna work with uh, Gil Montague, but yet we don't have Pioneer. It's, it's an opportunity lost because they could be part of that. And what's gonna be the thing there? And also, I'd like to know, David, if you had stuff that you could send to us, that would be great. Well, I'm saying let's put out the call to all 12 school committee members, all all uh, 16, well, I can't do math, 12 uh, select board members, more than that, and finance committee members. Uh, Alan, I think Michael had a good point for Steve. Um, something that's just concrete that should, could be done that, that Deb mentioned was facilities. People were wondering what, what programming can happen and it certainly all depends upon what facilities each school has so for Steve to literally just have a checklist side by side of what facilities um, are at each uh, at each of the buildings would be something that could be concrete be done um, and would have a lot of answer for pro programming that would be available yeah I agree that we need to have the list of their facilities and then what would they be appropriate to the programs that they could have? Um, yeah, absolutely, that's I make note to that. That's one of the things we would want to want to get, and then also advise what are they, how are they using their space now? Steve, you also want to get their schedule, right? We'd like to. We need their master schedule. One of the things we want to get their master schedule and compare it to their program of studies. And the program of studies says what are the courses they're going to offer but how many of those actually did run and then also what was the enrollment in those um, it gets very difficult to run some programs when you only have four or five kids in it but the those this handbook i mean the schedule is available on pioneer website you could download the whole thing and see exactly what's no, we're was talking this year we're talking, or last year we're talking the master schedule that shows what teachers are teaching and what the classes it's, it's in their computer system so oh, i have computer. i have those from the ruth miller era because I went to school over at the tech school with the superintendent and he said, because we were having budget problems, he said, the first thing you do is you start with your comprehensive schedule. I said, what's that? And so eventually it wasn't easy. It was like pulling teeth, but I got access to those. And I saw that at the time Pioneer was running the same sections that they did 10 years ago and the teachers weren't working full loads and the classes had seven or eight kids in them. That stuff's been corrected since, but if that's the best information we have to work with, I can provide it. And well, I really it rather have, I, it really, but let's let's have reality what we are dealing with today in 2020. And that's that's not a hard problem. They can send that out. And uh, four of our, our uh, the four uh, our super uh, four of our consultants three were principals, 
and all of us have been superintendents. So they know how to read those programs. You guys have not tried so to contact I'm, Mr. Burke to, to get the master schedule at all, a pioneer, the principal? Um, inappropriate for us to go around the superintendent. It was just a sort of system we would deal with. It puts that person in a difficult situation when we've been told by the superintendent that he does not want us to, he doesn't want to do anything until he gets the okay from the school committee. So I would not want to put the principal in a compromising position. And I think so it's I'm going to come full circle. It, it, Alan, it, if it, I may, I think going it's going back to, to Michael. Go ahead, Mark. I think it's fair to say we're not asking for the moon here. We're not asking for a lot of time. We will need to meet with them periodically. But again, we're building on last study, the last study we did. David, to answer your question, it wouldn't be me asking Tanya for new information. It would be me asking Tanya or somebody else to review my numbers, to fill in some projections, to work with me on projections, so I can wrap up the do nothing scenario. And to that and point, if, if, to that point um, with the Freedom of Information Act, it's hard for me to ask for a document that doesn't exist. Right. So, why don't we, why can't um, Jay Sullivan, who, you know, if they don't want to give it to you, why doesn't he just tell Rick Kingsley that this is the information that uh, we need and that either he gets it or he gets it from Tanya, but someone needs to produce it. That's, he's the financial overseer. Sounds good to me, but... Uh Having had a meeting in the Desi Commissioner's office last month, he did not know his powers under the acts of 2018 and Pioneer. Clueless. Well, not clueless, but he, he, did not, he didn't really not feel that he was in the driver's seat. I didn't get any sense of that. that you referring to Jay Sullivan? No, I'm referring uh, to uh, Mr. Riley. Rick Kingsley? Mr. Riley. Jeffrey Riley, the Desi Commissioner. Oh. He, he has, I mean, to, to go to, can't Kingsley be told to do this? Kingsley is Riley's eyes in the district. And I think he could say, I need, you need to cooperate with this. I mean, the legislation says that, that the district, parts of the district agreement are abrogated and schools may be closed or realigned and such with the approval of the commissioner. So, well, well, I thought Jay Sullivan could do that. I, I thought Jay Sullivan is at the top of the pyramid that we're, we're in with Pioneer and that he could tell Rick that this is what needs to happen. Um, I'm hoping that that happens. So in the meantime, I want to loop back to what Michael said. I think Michael's got a, a good point in, in terms of we have resources here. You have information, David, that you can send on. Michelle has information. Abby has information. I think if we open up those avenues so that you're uh, making phone calls or however you want to do that, that we, you get the information from other people. If we're not getting it from Pioneer, we fill in the blanks as best as we can and that um, we proceed on the original intent of the grant. And then um, it, it, it is what it is. Mark, you probably don't want to hear that, but go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I just thought of another strategy, and that is could, on the financials. Could I work with your finance subcommittee as one potential alternative strategy? And collectively, um, we come up with the... We've got a lot of... Yeah, the planning board has a lot of really smart people in the financial aspect of it, so you could have a... You could have a, uh, a subcommittee meeting with a, with a finance uh, committee with sharing that information. And they certainly um, could probably provide a lot of good information for you. So I think that's a good suggestion, again, to you know, get information to fill in the gaps. Um, I, I feel comfortable that the numbers we're going to present are going to be reasonable. 
I gave you perhaps four or five alternative strategies to get to that mm -hmm. impact. And obviously, one of those strategies has more input from Pioneer than the others. So I'm comfortable on my end. Steve has more of a challenge to get the type of information that he needs. So why aren't we, why don't we just proceed with the scope of the grant, do the best that you can with the information that you're getting, and then we'll, 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 go, we'll have to wrap up what we have, put a bow on it, and we'll have a final report with some disclaimers on it. Like, it would have been nice to have more participation. Um, I think Abby and then David. Yes? Abby has passed on to David. I believe there is a pioneer budget committee subcommittee meeting scheduled um, pretty soon. I, I saw an email this week about one in the future, and it was to deal with unexpended money. Um, given that the pioneer committee has voted to support uh, looking at combining services and such, maybe I can try to get an item on that meeting's agenda about this process and participating in it. And maybe that committee would recommend to the full school committee. Or maybe that budget. Pat, are you on the budget committee? Yes. That's what I thought, but I don't think we have a quorum here. So, um, but if we get one more vote that says, yes, uh, uh, please be forthright with this process um, from the budget committee, maybe, maybe things will change. Maybe. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Abby, yeah, I mean, did you, I, I keep thinking you're raising your hand. Am I, are you just like, did you I'm, have something you wanted to say? No, I'm playing with the lights in my car, trying to make sure I can see. Oh, okay. okay. That's the, that's the wave part. Um, so let's follow up on Mark's uh, idea. Um, I think it's a good one to have the plan, the planning board sub finance facilities whatever else they were doing, um, transportation uh, um, subcommittee, um, have a Zoom meeting with Mark once he pulls much of that together, share it. Maybe you could send it out to them ahead of time and they could look it over and then you can have a meeting and, and uh, get their, their, uh, their thoughts and whatever information they may have. Are any of you on the subcommittee for finance? Yes. We have... David's on it. Jane's on it. Who else? Uh, Mike. Yep. Mike's on it. Mike, who else is on it? Lance is on it. Lance. Okay. Uh, Lance. Lance is on it. And. Uh, oh, gosh. There's one more person. There's a, there's a woman. Lynn Reynolds. Lynn Reynolds is on it. Yes. Okay. So you could pull that off, have a meeting with them. And sooner than later. Um, we'll, we'll, one of the action items that's really important that we do today is to make sure that we vote to uh, participate remotely in our, in our um, planning board meetings as well as our subcommittee meetings, and then also to vote to have our meetings posted in the Gil Montague Regional School District uh, website um, for both uh, 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 regular meetings and subcommittee meetings. So we, once we do that today, that that gives us the um, the opportunity then to have those follow up subcommittee meetings and to do these this meeting remotely. All right. So we need a motion. I'm hearing. <laughs> pardon. We need a motion. <laughs> Well, I haven't moved to that part yet. Okay. I'm, I'm still on this one. So I'm trying to figure, you know, we had plan one, two, three, but then we had five different strategies. Um, going to Michael's point, I think we'd go forward with the scope of the grant and what, what we, what we uh, thought we would do as deliverables. And then we do the best we can with the information that we get. Is, is that too naive or you think that's doable, Mark? I think that's doable. We should, know, we should know within a few days how Jay Sullivan and John Skagel, uh, how their conversation went. 
Do we know? Well, I hope happen? it goes well, because the board of selectmen in Warwick is has lost their patience and want to um, proceed with their attorney and the school district attorney um, on uh, pursuing um, this and other issues. Is that accurate, David? David, you're muted. Can't hear you. You're muted, David. That does describe their sentiments. Um, and it might be helpful to the cause if the reporter in on the meeting reported that it was talked about. Um, I don't really think there's a case. I, I mean, Alan responded to it saying this, this is really professional courtesy um, or, or part of the job, but you know, it's not actionable. It's, just, it, it's the school committee that needs to step up here. Can, yeah, can, and I, I don't want to keep it sounding like we're blaming the school committee because that, I think in a way the school committee is being held hostage by, by uh, who controls the agenda. So, um, you know, if they had a conversation and say they didn't want to participate, that's well, that, that's fine. They have to remember they were elected by the town, of, by the people in the towns who also elected this planning board to do things. So um, I in myself have used that and say, well, the school committee is not, you know, going forward. And I, I need to rethink how I do that and say the school committee is not having an opportunity to discuss it so that it, it's, it's not falling on them because that's not fair. Thank you. Can I ask a an asked question? What is Tanya's official status? Tanya now is um, full time. I'm not sure when she starts, David. Do you know or Abby? It's very interesting that um, there has been no public vote on that. Um, her move to a 10 hour week, there was no open meeting vote on that. Uh, the last official thing I saw was her resignation. So I'm real curious what her legal position is. And I have taken the uh, advice of my personal lawyer for school committee business, who's not town council or school council, that the best way I can stay out of trouble in my multiple roles as town coordinator appointed, previous to elected as school committee member, is not to trade on any privileged information. And I figured out for myself the best way to make sure that doesn't happen is I'm not participating in, in uh, executive sessions. And, and I think they've been abused. I agree with Jane. So Mark was asking the question, is, 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 is Tanya, I mean, the rumor out there, let me put it that way, is a rumor. It was that she was offered a, like a, a, a multi-month contract at a, a, a salary in excess of 100000 And um, so if that's the case, why aren't we getting her cooperation? Why would she be asking, why would John be asking? Here's the conflict. He, he said he didn't have the time to do this and, and basically said to Steve, you know, stop making phone calls to him. He doesn't have the time. And then almost in the same breath, it sounded like he said, um, if, would, would we get a stipend? Would there be a stipend to pay for this? So you either don't have the time. So regardless of whether you get a stipend or not, you don't have the time in the story. Um, if all of a sudden you have the time because you get a stipend, um, that doesn't make any sense. Look at the Herculean effort that Michael has done. Um, and the grant, by the way, would never support a stipend. Um, that's not part of the grant. So it's, it's, it's just, I, I think it's embarrassing to, to, for someone to ask that question to begin with. So, um, all right, that's my vent. <laughs> Tanya, um, if okay. I I okay. think I think this discussion has gone on long enough. There's only so much you can hammer each other on the head about what other people aren't doing, and I would prefer to move along and vote for the the first option, which was do nothing and go with what we got. 
Thank you. Yeah, and in that case, we don't, we don't, we don't need to vote. We're not modifying anything. Yeah, I would agree that we'll go as far as we can go and the data that we can give you. And then we would, when we write the report, we'd indicate what we couldn't be able to do and why. That makes sense to me. Do, uh, do you want um, to- Lance. Oh, that was right. Oh. Yeah, Lance, uh, I, I'd just like to make an observation. Uh, the comment was earlier that Pat at one time said that the nothing goes on the agenda unless the chairman of the school committee says it does. Well, the chairman of the school committee does have control of the agenda, whether the superintendent believes it or not. In, in that light, contact the, super, the chairman of the school committee and ask for an item to be included on the agenda. And I can't she, get one on. She, she, All mm -hmm. right. She won't do it? Is your answer? She won't put them on. You have actually... So you have people on the school committee requesting to be on the agenda and they're not able to get. No, their... no, no, that an item. No, we're ha I've, requested I I've requested items to discuss A or B and I've ended up having to go in front of the school committee under citizens concerns because I can't get it on the agenda. That sounds like a problem. I have been promised <laughs> that it will be on the agenda this next month. So, Alan, Greg, uh, yeah. So, a, a couple of questions. One, it, it looks like we're not going to modify the grant deliverables. So, I, you know, we we can move on in terms of that. In terms of, uh, it sounds like we just need to keep applying pressure to try and get them to do what we're asking. Uh, I, my question is, so he gives the excuse that he doesn't want to move on giving us any communication because he wants to get the school committee's blessing on this. Uh, is that even required? No. Okay, it if it's not, not. Okay, so if it, okay, so if it's not required, um, I, 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 as a select board member from Gill, would like to call him and would like to also say, I don't know why he's using, you know, I, I would like to know what his reasons are. If he says that Gil Bonnegue is not interested, I can specifically speak for Gil that we are still interested. So I'm not sure why, where he's coming from on that. Um, and two, uh, I would like to have a conversation with him to try to get this moving along without having to go through the school committee and say, it's not required, first of all. The towns are requiring this, uh, and, and this is beyond the, the scope of the school committee in, in a lot of respects, right? This, is what, this board was not formed with the school committee, I mean, other than having a rep from each town, which we, we couldn't even get all of the towns uh, involved on that. But, but even so, um, we don't need the school committee's blessing on this. And I, right. I, would, I, I personally, as a select board member now, would like to speak to him personally and directly and find and get straight answers from him. Because I'm hearing a lot of answers that everybody else has given. And I think someone from the Montague side, Gil Montague side, uh, I would like to speak to him directly. So I'll, I'll give him a call. I'd like to find out, one, why, why are they not participating with us? Because it's in their best interest. It really is. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm going to, you know, I, I will write down all his answers because I want to hear it personally. I've heard a lot mm -hmm. of things from, from the pioneer, and I'm, he you know, I'm hearing a lot of politics that go on within the four towns that are, belong to that. So I'm an objective sort of person sitting on the outside that doesn't have, you know, a, a dog in this fight. But um, so it's a little bit easier for me to sit back objectively. Um, but I have real questions for him, which I, I figure I'm going to give him a call tomorrow and just find out. I, I don't understand. There's nothing to lose at this point by contacting directly. Right. I'm not going to be, I have no, I have no emotions in this. So I'm, there's no reason for me to get upset with him. Um, I'm sure it'll be, fine and civil, uh, but I would like to know as soon as possible, because if we can get their input, it's going to make our deliverables that much more valid. And I, that's where Mark's mm -hmm. coming from. And we can do the best we mm -hmm. can with what mm -hmm. we're doing right now. And that's what we're going to do. So, you know, right. I, I would, I, I personally would like to move the agenda along and, and see, you know, we're all, we've beaten this, as, as Bill has said, we've beaten this you know, to death at this point. 
Um, and we can all just continue to apply pressure. You and I can, can contact the other select boards uh, and, and just keep doing the best we can. Um, but right. I, I think now, as superintendent, he could bring it up on, on under his report. He could bring up at any time he chooses not to. So that's the bottom line. Yeah. Um, we're not going to, I think we, we do, we have the full planning board is well aware of the issue. Um, Mark has uh, put out and, and Steve, um, the challenge that they will face as they move forward. And so we'll just, uh, let's just go forward with this and, and, um, see how well that we can do. And so we're not really modifying anything at this time. We'll, we're gonna report out perhaps a little bit differently, but um, why don't we use that as our plan for now? I would, Greg, Greg I, would, I would say to you, go ahead and make the phone call, see what you get from answers. Yep, thanks. Jane? Yes, I think that's fine and I'd like to make a motion. Okay, wait a minute, David? I wonder, if, will there be a deliverable that's a um, spreadsheet model that we could input new values in uh, that would have predictive uh, value to us so that we, we basically build a tool and then if it takes us uh, some time to get to, you know, the real numbers, we could uh, ha have well, a useful like tool and, and something, something to use, you know, next year and the year after to input our um, actual financial results. Mark? So uh, the short answer is yes. All my numbers are on Excel spreadsheets. They tie back to every line item in Gil Montague's budget and every line item in Pioneer's budget. They're they are linked to a percent increase right now based on DESI function codes. So I think with that base, the answer is yes. Okay. And can I just comment on the plan, if I oh, may? Yes. Yeah. I think this is great. I'm glad we had this discussion. A, you understand where we are. B, I think you have a better understanding of our deliverables. C, I think collectively we're all agreeing we can get there and we can get there by June 30. The question is which of the approaches becomes more valid and has more buy-in. So I like the idea of the board presenting an update to the school committee on May the 21st. And May the 21st, we are gonna be what, three more weeks ahead of where we are today. But I would also suggest you give the same update to the Gil Montague School Committee. And you're giving an update. You're not asking for approval. You're not asking, you may ask for input. Um, and there's no question around the issue of, do we need approval from the Pioneer School Committee to move forward on this? Because A, we got the grant and B, the, the six towns are driving this. Nicely said. Um, and you're right. We, we, we should be talking to uh, having a meeting also with the uh, Gil Montague School District and giving them an update so that, um, you know, we're, we're handling both districts um, the same. Um, Jane, I'm not sure what that motion would be because I don't know we really need one, but I'm, I'll entertain it because you uh, said you had a motion. I do. I, I want to add to uh, making a report to the two school districts that there should be a report to each um, board of selectmen. And I think I mentioned that at our last meeting because we really are formed by the four towns. And so they should get the same report. If it's verbal or if it's Zoom or if it's in writing, it doesn't matter as long as everybody gets the same thing. The motion right. I want to make is to cut off this discussion, basically, because I'm going to move to approve remote participation and posting our um, minutes on the Gil Montague website. For, can, can you continue the motion for our planning board meetings and our subcommittee meetings? Yes. Second. Is there a second? 
Second. Is there a link? Who, who, got, the, who got the first second? <laughs> I didn't hear. I think you got to create your motion. It really take two motions. One is motion to have um, Zoom participation, remote participation. The second motion is to post your meetings and subsequent uh, minutes on the Gil Montague website. Two different right, motions. So let me rephrase that. So I would Jane like to so amend? I'll entertain a motion. Yeah, Jane, you want to amend it? Sure, I move to uh, approve remote participation by our committee. But no, by the planning board and the subcommittee. Both planning board and subcommittee by all our entities. Meetings. Second. Who said that? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Um, For the did, discussion, Mike. Yeah, could we, if we're going to be doing this over Zoom, can we record the meetings and have yeah, them along with the meetings? Yeah, I'm recording this meeting. Okay, good. And, and But I'm, I'm thinking uh, subcommittee meetings as well. Uh, yeah, anyone that hosts a meeting. Can so everybody them. understands that. Yeah, we, we have to record them. I mean, for public. Yeah, okay. that doesn't have to okay, be good. Just to the establish motion that. that's required. Yeah. All right, so we had a motion, we had a second. Um, any other discussion? Can I? Uh, put, Pat. Are we going to put it to, um, like to the end of this, this coronavirus thing or do we, are we gonna have a time on how long we can have the Zoom meetings or is that gonna be forever? I don't well, know we don't we have to make a part of this motion and it, it will be to whenever uh, the Attorney General's office says that um, we don't, can't do that anymore. Okay, do we need to have that on the motion or not? No, I don't no. think so. We can have a motion to stop when the time okay. comes. Yeah. Okay. We, we, could, we can leave it open-ended too, in case we need it again. True. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do because we don't have, we don't have to be doing this just because of the coronavirus. We right. could do this because it, uh, we, for other reasons. So we'll just leave it open. Like a Lance blizzard in May. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Question? So Lance. Yeah. Um, I understand right now we can have Zoom meetings, but, but remote participation, as I understand it, you have to have a quorum in the room and other members are allowed to participate. Is that true? No, that has, that has been lifted, lifted by the uh, uh, governor and the attorney general because of the yeah, coronavirus. Until the end of the coronavirus, but once once we're out of the state of emergency, they'll dispense with that, and then we'll go back to the old rule, won't we? That's right. Yeah, yes, that would be correct. These these so meetings. If can we be... vote for remote participation, as I understand it, it would include Zoom meetings until the coronavirus ends, and then allow us to have re remote participation by members, as long as there was a quorum in the room. I agree. That's the intent. Can I interject okay, here? I, understand. I think we're, we're talking about two separate things and maybe we need two motions. Remote participation is one thing and we all know how that works. You have to have a quorum, but I can't make it tonight so I can participate remotely. Then there mm -hmm. is a situation we're in now with Zoom. My motion was for remote participation and I would encourage you to act on that and then somebody else can make, or I will make a motion to participate during the coronavirus epidemic, whatever, siege um, by Zoom. Second. Any other discussion? Greg, you understand the motion? Well, no. if I don't, I've recorded it, so I can go back and <laughs> It was simply to approve remote participation. No, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, we uh, Zoom, where everybody's everybody's coming in is, is one thing. Remote participation means you can have three people in the room and one person call in. Right. All right. So, that's what the I understand. That's motion. Okay. All right. So that's the motion. Um, all those in favor, I can actually see everybody. So why don't I do this? All those in favor, um, raise your hand.
Uh, anyone opposed? Put your hands down. Anyone opposed? The only person I did not see was Steve. Did you raise your hand, Steve? Is he frozen? <laughs> uh, I'm no. not a voting member. He's not a member. No, He's no, not a member. No. Richter. Rick, oh, okay. Uh, all those abstaining. Okay, he may be frozen. All right, well, I'm going to call the motion passed because I had a majority. Okay. Yes. I saw every I saw every hand. I don't know where you didn't see a hand. So I'll make another motion. Right. Steve Steve Richter is is he's his screen is seems to be frozen. So <laughs> <laughs> he's not moving. <laughs> so. I don't even see him. He he he? Fell asleep. No, no, he's he's just looking at us, not moving. <laughs> All right. I don't have them on my screen. I do. All I'll, right. Um, next motion. motion. Yeah. Okay. I move that we use the uh, Gil Montague website for our mi minutes of our um, our board and Post the subcommittee minutes. Posting. Posting. posting you you vote your motion is to is to post our meetings on the gill montague website and the subcommittee meetings on the gill montague website right second is there a second was that who was that pat deb deb, deb? deb. okay deb. so there's motion and second any other discussion uh, hearing none i'll just chime in and just to, to let everybody know, since I do the postings, uh, that just allows us to uh, cover our bases in two places. I, I will still send the postings to the towns, but if the town, if all six towns don't, for some reason, don't post it, as long as it's posted with the uh, district, we're covered. Okay. Right. And, and, and given the fact we're not sure when people are in town meetings and, and or town, you know, offices and so forth, um, you know, it, it may just be that someone wasn't there to get it. So, um, all right. Uh, so we have a motion. We have a second. Uh, no more discussion. Uh, again, I'm going to try to do this by uh, all those in favor, raise your hand. <laughs> he, he was live there for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> he moved. I see he every moved. hand up. Okay, so I see it unanimous on what I'm looking at. You can put your hands down. So I'm not going to ask for objections or I mean or abstentions or. Well, so. I, I would call for him, just to be sure. Because say that again. I would call for it because Steve froze. So just. Are you going to call him and ask him now? Or no, I, just said, I, I said it's always good to ask for abstention or to, to ask for nays. Yes. Oh. All right. All those in favor, we did. All those opposed, I see none. Any abstentions? I don't see anything here. So <laughs> we may have uh, one. So I, I asked all three. All right. So that motion passes. Thank you very much. That was the that was a major thing we had to accomplish today. Um, I think we already covered the subcommittee expectations for finance and education. Uh, we're going to have them involved in providing information and working with a consultant. So I'm, I'm really pleased to, to know that we can get some really good information. And that's regardless of whether or not Pioneer decides to participate or not. We, we need to use that avenue to get additional um, in, information and feedback, okay? Um, so the chairs of those can start looking at um, how to plan that meeting. And Greg, if they don't have Steve's email or Mark's, um, can you make sure you get it to them? So as they're planning the meeting, the chair can contact them and see, you know, when they're available before they um, schedule their meeting. Okay. Did you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, is there any other items that the planning board members may have that we didn't get on the agenda for the 48 hours? This is the time to bring them up. 
I just have a question yeah. about the um, Zoom meetings. Um, is there a particular account we should be using or, because uh, I know um, you have to have an account and. I, yeah, and I, the, reason, the yeah. reason I'll just so I, the reason I host it is because right now being a teacher, uh, I can, I, I have access to longer than 40 minute meetings, mm -hmm. which is why I suggested that I host the meeting. Uh, it just allows us, otherwise, if you, you know, otherwise you have to pay to upgrade. And right. uh, for now, um, you know, we can, we can use this. There, there are other options. There's uh, Google Meet if that's, you know, if that works for other people. But, uh, okay. but for now, as long as I have this, I'm, I'm happy to, to host. And Alan, I think I, I actually can, uh, I think I can actually switch who, I can make you the host once we get on, so. I just realized. Yeah. Well, we can talk later about that because we can share. I think you can share that as well. Um, so we can we can talk more about that later. So I'm not What's hearing any uh, any other. Oh, oh. David. Uh, Alan, I, I just wanted to apologize to everybody for Alan's internet connection. He's not on war with broadband. He's on satellite. I'm on war with broadband. <laughs> think about it, Alan. <laughs> okay, uh, Mike. Thanks, thanks, David. You're Love you up, too, <laughs> <laughs> Michael. Mike, a qu question uh, on the question of hosting meetings. How will that work for subcommittees then? Well, I, I, I mean, the for same. the education subcommittee, I'm I'm happy to host, and I'll send out an email, and you guys just take the link. I I do this all the time. You can also, um, you know, you can you can host a meeting for forty minutes, and then it, it will shut you down. You can then start another meeting and do another. Actually, forty minutes. Actually, Uber Conference and Zoom and all of them have waived the forty minutes because right now, um, but and I, I have a, I have a paid Uber Conference that, that we could use too. They'll. All right. So was, good point. Um, the the chair of each of these subcommittees, the finance committee and the and the and Deb will let you know, Greg, when they're going to have their meeting after they've talked to Mark and Steve respectively, and then you'll do the posting on the website. Um, I'm hearing Deborah will host the one for the education, and who will be hosting the one for finance? Is that are you volunteering, David? Are you on finance, or is it Mike? Who? Um, I, I volunteer. I'm not very experienced in terms of inviting or being the meeting host or anything, but I do pay $20 a month for the service and it works. And I haven't um, charged it down until I can use it with my family and such. So Yeah, well, Greg could give you, um, he's helped me, Greg could give you sort of a little tutorial of how you, it's a little different for setting up and hosting the meeting than just participating. Is that all right, Greg, that you and, you and David talk and you can walk them through some of the stuff? I could try. <laughs> I can certainly yeah. try, David. Well, I, okay. I've been I've been challenged from having meetings in the same day on Google Meet and Uber Conference and Zoom and Skype and Jitsi and sometimes I can't get my microphone to work with the next app and uh, so I, I'm a real proponent of pick something like Zoom and let's stick with it if this is what people are familiar with. Let's stick with it. This has worked pretty well. And I, I do have to say, I really appreciate people finding the time to uh, participate in this and, and um, for the consultants um, to all come on board and, and be a part of this and uh, this discussion. Um, it, I, I, had, I had my doubts. I, I had not um, participated in one that was greater than 12 members. So having 20 plus, or, or I don't know how many we have here, but quite a few is, it's like having a classroom in front of you. <laughs> so um, thank you all for participating. We do have um, on the agenda a May 6th. Pardon? Before we sign off. Well, we're not going to do that. We gotta, we gotta... My understanding let, let me finish the last, let me, let me finish the last me. item and then we'll. Who's talking? Lance. Oh, Lance, me. go ahead. My understanding of what you want, uh, expect your expectation is that Mark will get a hold of me as chair of the finance committee to schedule 
a finance committee meeting? Mark? I, um, I don't know if that, uh, Mark, would that make sense? Can you do that? So, is that what let, you want? Let me suggest. Well, I, I, I would think that it makes more sense for Lance to schedule with the members uh, who are volunteers and come up with a date or two and then, uh, or work together. But I don't think we want to put the consultants in the business of scheduling our subcommittee meetings. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. So, that. so, yeah. So Lance, you're going to organize okay, a meeting and get a couple dates. Once you agree on that, you'll, you'll let uh, Mark know if he can make which one's best. And I need his Capiche? contact information. We can get that offline, right? Yes. Yes. We'll get you that information for both Mark and, and for Steve. So we have one other agenda item. Um, we were temporarily looking at May 6th at 6.30 to do another Zoom meeting. Can people do that? Anyone want to suggest another date or or is the silence mean you're in agreement with May 6th? May 6th you can nod because I can see you. I have a conflict that thumbs day. Up, thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up if, if, if that would work for you, May 6th? Somebody's saying conflict out there. Somebody, yeah. I have a conflict oh. that night. Oh, right. So do I. Okay. Okay. Wanna, what's May 7th? Is that a Thursday? Mm -hmm. That works. May, May 7th better? I'm seeing thumb, thumb, thumb. What about you, Bill? May 7th? Yeah, okay. that's fine. It looks like it's an agreement. Okay. So May, okay, thanks, Mike. All right, so May, May 7th at um, 6.30 and Greg will host it again. Um, if there's no other business, uh, let me just give a minute. To, any other business before I entertain a motion to adjourn? We are right at 8.30. All right. That's always my goal. Right. <laughs> Don't move. Okay. I'll second so I motion. entertain a motion to adjourn. Um, and I heard a so move. I'll second. second. And uh, all those in favor, thumbs up. We're done. Yes, okay. thumbs up. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye, Bye. So that little thing on the right says leave meeting. You can click on that and you disappear. Bye. Bye. <laughs>